Hello everybody, my name is Lana, this is Rainier Books. A few weeks ago I read Nieko Kawakami's new translated, new translated novel, All the Lovers in the Night, that was published in June, in the no, in the beginning, of, in the middle of May, actually, of 2022, and I promised a single review, and today it comes. Let's go. All Lo Lovers in the Night by Mieko Kawakami is translated from the Japanese, the third book translated from the Japanese by Sam Batten David Boyd. And it was the third book that was published by Picador in the United Kingdom and by Europa Editions in the United States of America. Mieko Kawakami is in her 40s. She has written these three novels with which she has become world famous now. Breast and Eggs two years ago, that was an international bestseller. Last year, Heaven, that was nominated for the International Booker Prize. And this year, All the Lovers in the Night, about 10 years ago. So the international audience gets these books by Miyako Kawakami 10 years later than they were written. But anyway, she's a new world star of literature. All the Lovers in the Night is the story of a very quiet woman from Tokyo, living in Tokyo. She's actually from Nagano, the city in which Olympic Winter Games were held a couple of years ago. But she lives in Tokyo. She's Fuyuko Iri, and she's 34 years old. She works as a proofreader. She reads other people's manuscripts of non-fiction, of fiction books, and she looks for mistakes. That is her job. And in every book, she says, She's the eye narrator of this novel. In every book, there is a mistake. As I worked my way through, I used the reference table that I kept to the left of the manuscript, which summarized the interpersonal relationships, timeline and plot at a glance, checking for inconsistency with what the characters in the novel were actually saying in the relentless stream of dialogue. This novel in particular, which I had started reading two days earlier, had introduced so many people over a number of years, too many names to count. Since the story took place in a large mansion, I also had a sheet with a floor plan on it. So she meticulously researches these books that she hasn't written herself. She's not someone who creates, she is someone who is sort of reading and looking for mistakes all the time. That is her job as a proofreader. She has no social life. She has really no social life. She's extremely lonely and she says at one point when she was working in an office as a proofreader no one ever spoke to me unless they needed something and she almost never leaves her apartment she never travels back to her parents to her family in Nagano where she once came from she never goes on holiday when she has holiday Japanese people people in Japan they have very short holidays about a week each and every year only but she never goes away there are just a few characters in this novel most of them women, and one of them is Hijiri Ishikawa. She works as a kind of liaison person for freelance proofreaders. She connects proofreaders, freelance proofreaders, with the publishers. And Hijiri is about the same age as Fuyuko, and she's also from Nagano. She's always well-dressed, she's always, and uses all kinds of makeup, and likes also to have a drink from time to time. She meets sometimes Fuyuko, Fuyuko in a uh, restaurant and it's very funny how Fuyuko describes Hijiri's lips and that shows you a little bit of the humor that is in um, Mieko Kawakami also. Hijiri puckered her lips and looked at me like she was sorry. Even though it was dark, the ambient light defined the contours of her plump, shapely lips, which looked so full of life that they could have hopped off her face and walked around at any moment. While Hijiro is the Japanese woman, same age as Fuyuko, who, is, who represents the sort of accepted and expected type of woman in Japanese society, well-dressed, nice makeup, manicured and everything like that, um, Fuyuko herself, she never looks into a mirror. She gives blood 
at one early point in the novel and when she and she gives only blood because someone on the street just asks her do you want to give blood and she says yes because she's not able to say no to anyone so she says yes and she gives blood and at one point in that hospital in this facility where she gives blood she takes a, now she doesn't take a look but she sees herself in the reflection in the window and that tells you that she never looks into a mirror and here is how she describes herself seeing that reflection in the window i happened to catch a glimpse of my reflection in the window glass the image of myself that floated to the surface tinged with blue against the backdrop of the signs walls and windows of the nearby buildings looked absolutely miserable not sad or tired but the dictionary definition of a miserable person this was the woman that I saw in the glass while an assortment of other objects drifted in and out of the reflection. The space around my head was wild with baby hair or stray hairs that had come free. My arms and legs looked stubby while my neck looked long and skinny. The tendons around my collarbone and throat stuck out and my skin was anything but supple, as if the flesh had been deflated, leaving bizarre diagonal lines on my cheeks. What I saw in the reflection was myself in a cardigan and faded jeans at age 34. Just a miserable woman who couldn't even enjoy herself on a gorgeous day like this. On her own in the city, desperately hugging a bag, full to bursting with the kind of things that other people wave off or throw in the trash the first chance they get. This is a clinical, a razor-sharp description of a miserable person, of how the way actually Fuyuko feels and maybe why that's why she never looks in, into the mirror. So Fuyuko Iri is a miserable, a sad, a lonely character and she is the protagonist, the I narrator of this novel. And this is so seldom I think in literary fiction, at least coming from Japan, that a female character like Fuyuko is the main protagonist, like the quotation mark and unquote hero of this, the heroine of this novel. One evening, she reads a pile of magazines in her apartment. She nuts reads them because she's interested in the content. She just doesn't know what to do with her time. She has already started drinking. She drinks now. She has never drank before, but now she drinks beer. She drinks sake, Japanese rice wine, until she gets drunk because she has understood that it is easier for her to fall asleep in the night and sometimes also during the day when she drinks a lot of alcohol, when she is sort of drunk. And one evening she reads these magazines, not to read the content, as I said, but to find mistakes into the magazines. She finds them, four, or five, six, seven mistakes in these magazines, no problem. But then she comes towards a catalog of courses at a cultural school in Shinjuku in central Tokyo. Shinjuku is one of the busiest places in the whole world in Tokyo. It's very, very crowded. And she goes to that culture is centered to that school and she wants to attend a class. She wants to attend a class in a course called Global Tragedy Traditions. That's the one that she chose that she chooses in the end. And there she passes out, she has problems again because she's drunk, and that's where a guy, an older guy who is 15 or 20 years her senior, Mitsutsuka, a physics teacher, helps her. And these two people Mitsutsuka and Fuyuko start a very strange kind of relation because even Mitsutsuko seems to be a very lonely man and she's a very lonely woman and they meet at a cafe each Sunday and they start talking a little to each other they sit in that cafe and they are bowing to each other like it is tradition in Japan and they are very kind and they he never ever tries to sort of touch her or sort of um, become her boyfriend or lover. No, they just meet there. Yuko and Mitsutsuka, they make up a couple, a pair, not a pair, but a pair of friends. If you see it that way, that is very uncommon in literature. And Miko Kawakami said that in Breast and Eggs, her novel that was her breakthrough internationally, uh, many people read it, many people wrote about it in social media and on social media and she's very active on social media I should I put a link down to her Instagram account which is very active and Miyoko Kawakami said that many people reached out to her from abroad and said we didn't know that there are poor people in Japan and Kawakami says that there are a lot of poor people and they just 
have not so often become a piece, a part of Japanese literature. She herself is from uh, a city called Osaka in the south. It's close to Kyoto. You might have heard, you probably have heard about the city. She has a lot of philosophical questions from the beginning when she was a teenager. Her father was pretty absent. She lived in pretty, not I don't think poor, but in pretty mod very modest, um, in a very modest family that didn't have much money. And she worked herself up. She worked as a bar uh, she worked as a waitress, she worked as a singer-songwriter, she started studying philosophy at a certain point, and that is her big interest um, outside literature. And now she is one of the world's most famous writers of today, actually. So let's get back to the novel. Futsutsuka is a teacher at a high school, and he teaches physics. That's what he says to um, Fuyuko. And Fuyuko, the few things she's interested in, there's light that she's interested in. And that's a common interest of both of them. I like light too, he said. It's pretty much what got me into physics, really. I was stunned now, staring him in the face. Really? Really, Mitsutsuka said. Light's a mystery. No one knows what it is. Sometimes I think I've got it figured out, but I really don't. When I was a kid, I thought it was the strangest thing. I was so curious that I started studying it. I stared at Mitsutsuka's face. I still think about light sometimes, even now. You do? Sure. Uh, do you think the light you're thinking about and the light I'm talking about are hmm, the same thing? Of course they are, Mitsutsuka said with a smile. We're talking about the same light. And there's this idea of light, which is also very philosophical, because light, what is light? Um, I've never asked myself that question because I'm not the kind of science guy, but light is nothing else than certain way of electromagnetic waves that are absorbed. I'm not gonna explain the title of this book because the title is very special and the title is coming at the end. You will understand it in the end of the book why it is called All the Lovers in the Night. And I also want to say that what what I have said about the book seems it seems boring, it seems sad and stuff like that. And there are many of these aspects in Fuyuko's life, but there is light. <laughs> oh my gosh, there there is light at the end of the novel. A lot of light, I would say. Very interesting discussion of two authors um, on YouTube of Mieko Kawakami on the one side and another author that I really admire, Kali Fajardo Anstein on the other side. They talk about All the Lovers in the Night and Woman of Light, of Light, a novel by uh, Carlo Fajardi and Steen was not published yet. I put a link down there to their conversation. It's a great conversation between two young writers uh, from the United States and from Japan. All the Lovers in the Night is proof that Miyako Kawakami is here to stay. She is one of the most exciting authors in the world right now. You must read this book. It will make you sad, but it will also shine a light. And with this, I leave you for today. See you soon with a sum up. Bye-bye.